y'all welcome back so it's been roughly a year since i've installed the dual tbx 10a powered subwoofer into my 06 chevy colorado and being that it's in my chevy colorado that's my work truck so i use it every day and i've tested it very very rigorously <laughs> now if you're standing in like walmart at the display and you're looking at one of these looking at your phone watching this review trying to figure out if you should buy it or not the very short answer and I'm gonna give it to you, is yes, go ahead and buy it. But please do me a favor and go ahead and save this video, go back and watch it, because I'm also gonna drop a link probably right up here for my original video on it, which was installing it. It's not really cut and dry. It may have a little bit of limitation if you're looking for a certain thing, but I think for most people, it's great. And uh, had a little bit of a problem with it, but I'll explain it to you and we'll go ahead and get into it. The TBX-10A is an all-in-one amp sub combo that is available from Walmart for about $99. Well, it really doesn't have a lot of features or a bass knob, it does have a 0 to 180 phase shift control and power and protect LEDs. One thing I actually really like about it is its size. It's got a nice weight to it while still feeling manageable yet well built. Also, you can disconnect the amp in like one second and take it inside with you every night. Alright, so full disclosure, kind of the point of this video was uh i was having a little bit of problem with this and uh, that was kind of going to go into the review and uh, what was going on was it would cut out for you know between like three and ten seconds periodically so uh i wanted to figure out why it was doing it and um it had fallen over a couple times because uh, if you remember from my video i said i wasn't going to use the straps to strap it down if you get this use the straps to strap it down and uh it fell over a couple times so I started thinking maybe there was, uh, you know, some unwanted pressure on this connector here because it's one of them all in one connectors, which I actually kind of like for this. But anyways, um, so I figured, you know, maybe we'll check that out. And I started pulling screws out and I got to this one right here and I thought, you know, I should probably check the other end of the connector. And uh, lo and behold, and I figured out this is exactly what it is, but... Um, as you can see, there's no wire in there. This is for the remote, and uh, this is the butt connector that I had. I had a Skosh kit. I'm sure you're familiar with this. If you know, you're familiar with Walmart, you're familiar with Skosh. And uh, the thing with those kits is the remote, excuse me, the remote wire in those kits, for some reason, the remote wire is always garbage. I mean, I know you don't need a lot for a remote wire, but I mean, they're just garbage. And uh, as you can see, the power side is there's still some in there work because you know i made a good connection but uh this was a janky connection so basically yeah it was just kind of like hanging out in there not really crimped in and uh i guarantee you that's what the problem was so since i went ahead and disconnected these uh, my buddy actually had a scar amplifier and then a couple of jbl 10s that he wanted to test out <laughs> So we went ahead and did that, and um, what that made me want to do was I'm actually going to go ahead and for now, because I don't have my Phoenix Gold uh, hooked up, I'm going to take this Bazooka amplifier, which I think is about 300 watts, and then go ahead and then hook those up to the dual power acoustic 12-inch subs that I have in a uh, pretty big ported box. It's going to take up my whole back seat. But after having his in there, I was like, yeah, I, I think I want a little bit more bass. Now, uh, I have seen where people have hooked two of these up together, and it worked actually really well. It seemed to work really well. If you turn these up, um, it, it, they don't really dig very low, but it will give you a nice higher bass frequency and actually sounds pretty good. Um, doesn't sound very, very horrible when it's bottoming out or anything. Got a bunch of hair on it. And um, definitely all in all, this dual, I would definitely recommend it, especially for somebody who doesn't have a lot of money and just wants to add a little bass. And um, I listen to a lot of rap, so if you know you're looking for some uh, something that's going to bump your rap a little bit better, uh, this is definitely better. 
but it's not gonna like blow it out of the water you know uh, the one good thing about it is is it makes a lot of sound in the vehicle but outside of the vehicle it's not too loud and um anymore in my older age i actually like that because uh, I, I don't want to draw attention to myself but but uh sometimes i do now i'm going to be drawing attention to myself yeah you might hear this outside of the truck <laughs> Am I am I doing too much? Is that too much? Nah, it's fine. So you know, actually, the funny thing is, is uh, I should actually review this bazooka amp. It's about twelve years old, from what I can tell, and uh, not really too much going on with it. It says five hundred watt max, but um, it's a ELA three hundred point one, which usually means it can do three hundred watts. I mean, anymore. I I think that's what they're trying to go for there. Uh, not too much going on with it. It does have two 25 amp fuses, so uh, theoretically, I guess it could do 500 watts if it's able to. Uh, it does have some chunky uh, remote and ground and then uh, positive inputs for the uh, power. And I'm not really running too high of a gauge of wire for the speakers. Um, I like to usually have more than this, but um, this is just kind of for test purposes and uh, entertainment purposes. So, uh, like I said before, I have a Phoenix Gold amp that's a thousand watts that I usually use to push these, and it usually pushes them very well. So, um, I also, I usually run a secondary battery. I'm not really big on capacitors, although, I mean, I would take a capacitor over not having a secondary battery. But, uh, so, actually, we're going to be segueing into that in a future episode. Ooh, that's a nutter butter. We're going to be segueing into that in a future video <laughs> where I'm actually going to uh, hook up a better amp, probably get a smaller box to fit inside of my truck. Um, even though I don't like truck boxes, uh, I just, I got to have some type of room back there. And, uh, or honestly, I don't know, I might go back to the dual. But um, we're going to go ahead and show you how to hook up a secondary battery and uh, hook up a little bit of a better amplifier than this and uh, kind of go over a proper car stereo install. So, so definitely subscribe and watch out for that. That will be coming up soon. So I'm guessing the first thing is, is I'm going to have to figure out exactly how I'm going to run my wires and uh, just for the test now. This isn't going to be permanent like I said. But uh got to figure out how I'm going to actually run everything because I think my ground is sitting under here. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I'm not going to make you sit through all this since I'm going to do an actual video on how to properly do this. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do a jump cut and uh, have it all hooked up. And then we'll come back. I'll show you what's up and then we'll demo it. I guess for now that'll work. You gotta love these boxes with this aluminum on the side. You'll see why in a minute. know man that makes me kind of want to actually put this in here properly <laughs> with a better box that was hitting but yeah man it sucks uh, with these aluminum sides on these they always you can see uh, I put a screw in there actually no I think these screws are already in there but that's usually what people do is they'll screw that in there I would have just almost assumed take it out and put another piece of wood right there just to give it some uh, little bit of backing and glue it too so it doesn't get all that vibration. Yeah, it sounds like this speaker's blown, but believe me, these speakers ain't blown. Uh, with that much power, these are like yawning, so these ain't really doing much. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show you that. And uh, you know, kind of, I start with talking about how good the Duel is, but um, for me, you know, I just want a little bit more. But for, I, like I said, most people, the Duel is definitely very, very solid, and uh, I'm going to use it for, you know, another application down the line, and uh, so we'll see, you know, how that happens when I get there. But as for now, from the great prairie land, thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, all that, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, I always answer my comments, so uh, 
at least for now I do but uh, yeah shoot them down there and uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, have a good one enjoy this beautiful day <laughs> bye guys